What is structure and presentation for freestyle dancers? Stick around to the end and not only will I explain what it is and why it's important, I will also let you know how you can learn the techniques to improve the structure and presentation in your dance. Your content is important. It's what you want to say, it's what you want to express and it's what you want to get across to the world through your dance. Structure and presentation is about delivering that content. If dance is about communication, then in order to perform, you need to learn public speaking. Everyone who is good and effective at public speaking has one thing in common. They have structure and they have presentation. So let's start with structure. What is structure in dance? Structure is about time. Every time you freestyle or improvise, it will have a duration. It could be one minute, it could be 30 minutes, it could be an hour. In that time, you need to deliver the content that you would like to deliver. Structure is about how you spread that content out across the time, what do you deliver when and why. Structure is also about giving the audience a thread to hang on to. Not everyone will understand the intricacies of every style or every way of moving. However, if the audience ever gets confused or lost, they will stay with you if they have something to hang on to. If they have something they can recognize, they can relate to, whether this is a narrative, a story, a human emotion, or some type of theme, if the audience has something that they see and they can recognize and that you come back to, they will stay focused and engaged in your dance. Another thing when it comes to structure that's very important is pacing. Don't release all the information at once. The audience want to sit down, they want to enjoy the full length of your freestyle. If you go right in at the beginning and in the first 10 seconds release everything you have to say, what is their incentive to stay longer? You have to drip feed the audience, you have to give them a reason to keep watching. You also have to keep them interested from the beginning. Before you start dancing, you have to know how long you're going to be dancing for. You don't want to front load or back load your dancing so that the beginning half is very exciting but then tails off towards the end. Or you don't want the beginning to be very boring and the good stuff only happens at the end by which time you've lost the audience. A good way to do this is to break your dance up into sections. So you can think of this as acts in a movie, first act, second act, and third act. You can break it up however you like. There can be as many or as little different sections within your dance as you'd like. However, each of these sections needs to have a distinct reason to exist. When you change and move into the next section, you need to have moved into it for a reason. You need to be doing something different than you were before, or you need to be enhancing and building on the thing that you were doing before. If you do this really well, each section will not only have a distinct reason to exist, but they will also have a link, so they will flow easily from one into another. Within your structure, one thing that you have to consider is giving the audience what they want versus subverting expectations. Unexpected moments in your dance can lead to a really refreshing feeling. But if used too often or in the wrong places, this can also make an audience feel alienated and like they're not a part of your dance. So as much as you have unexpected moments, you also need moments that pay off exactly like the audience expect, because this will give them a feeling of being involved and being a part of your dance. When improvising or freestyling to music, one thing that is worth considering is the structure of the music. Most Western music is in 4-4 time signature, which means everything is broken up into sections of four or eight counts. We don't ever need to follow the music exactly. However, we do need to understand the structure of the music and how the structure of our dance can run parallel to that. One way I was taught to understand this was thinking about it like a band. A guitar player doesn't copy every single sound that the drummer makes. However, he still uses the drummer as a guide and a reference and understands the structure that the drummer is setting and builds on that. Some of the best and most effective dancers use structure very effectively in order to get their message across exactly how and when they want to. So let's go back to the analogy of public speaking. You have great content, you have a message, you have something you want to say. You've also learned to structure your message to be able to get it out there in the most effective way. However, when you're public speaking, if you have a great point, what does it matter if no one can hear you say anything that you're saying? If structure is about the when, presentation is about the how. So structure is about taking our content, spreading it out across the duration and delivering certain things at certain times for the maximum effect. Presentation should be happening throughout your entire dance, no matter when you're on stage. 
As soon as you start to dance and you start to perform, you need to present your dance well enough for people to see and understand what you're doing. Thinking about public speaking, you don't want to mumble as you speak. You want to speak clearly, you want to say the right things in the right way, with the right tone of voice and at the right volume. It's very important to be able to make your movements fill a space. So whether that's a 3000 seat arena or in front of three people in a small room, your movements need to feel like they fill the entire space. This doesn't necessarily mean dancing fast or big or doing the most explosive movements. There's a way to move which can help your dance to fill any space that you're in because it's all about perception and how the audience are viewing your performance. Another thing that works very well both in public speaking and dancing is pauses. Give the audience a chance to breathe and a chance to digest what you've just said or done. Stillness is very powerful. Pausing after or before the right sentence in public speaking or the right move in dance can really help to drive home a message and make the audience feel something. Another thing that is really important as a dancer is something that magicians use really well and this is directing attention. So at any given time, a magician knows where they want the audience to be focusing, whether that's on a certain thing or not on a certain thing. This is something that we need to apply as dancers as well. Any time that you're dancing and moving, there is a certain section of your body that you want the audience to focus on. This also might apply to a certain section of the space. So you need to be able to direct attention in the same way that a magician would with your audience. This can really help with creating the visuals and the pictures that you want to on stage. Every dancer has a different personality. There's different ways to engage an audience. So you also have to consider, are you going out to the audience? Are you meeting them with high explosive energy? Or are you gonna remain calm and still and bring the audience in to you? Both are very effective and both can be applied either at the same time or in different performances by the same dancers. You must also think about the physical space that you're in. Where are your audience? Are they in front of you? Are they all around? Are they only on two sides? You have to understand where the audience are and what they can see. One thing that you have to consider is how well can the audience read what you're doing? Are you doing very small movements in a 3000 seat arena and therefore the people in the back row are not as connected to you as the people in the front row? Or are you doing moves that everybody can read? This isn't always about the size of your moves, but about the clarity of them. Now, any time that you're dancing, no matter what content you're delivering, no matter what style you're dancing in, you also have to consider your body language within that dance. Now, the content is separate from your body language. Your body language is about your posture and how you're delivering that content. For example, are you looking nervous? Are you slouching? Are you really looking confident in the space? These are very human things that we get used to reading from each other on a day-to-day -day basis. If in day-to-day -day life, 90% of communication is non-verbal, then that's gotta be 100% when you're dancing and not speaking. You have to be able to use this to your advantage when you're dancing, as you can communicate a feeling a lot quicker if you do it through things that the audience are used to seeing. So even if you are confident, for example, looking down, not making eye contact, these type of things people are used to associating with nervousness. So I'm not saying you can't do them, but you have to find a way to communicate your message around them. Another thing that crosses both structure and presentation is filler moves. Now, a lot of time as dancers, it's the same as when you're public speaking. We have filler that we put in between words and between points in order to make us feel more comfortable as we don't tend to like awkward silences. Now, as a dancer or as a public speaker, you should be able to deliver your content without these filler moves. You shouldn't waste movements and do things that aren't essential to making your point. Dance is already a quite an abstract type of art. If you add filler moves, it adds to any confusion the audience might already have. If you are direct and clear about your point, it helps the audience to really understand and focus on what it is you want them to focus on. Now, any content that you want to get across, you can think of it on a spectrum. So at one end, you have a very literal interpretation of what you're doing. And at the other end, you have a very, very abstract interpretation. You have to consider where your content lies on that spectrum or where you want it to lie. You have to ask yourself, how clearly do you want us to understand the content? 
Do you want us to understand it on a very abstract level where we take different thoughts and different feelings and our own interpretations from it? Or do you want us to understand it very literally? And in which case there is a very different set of techniques that you have to employ in order to get that across to the audience. So how can you learn to do these things in your dance? I teach a workshop called Structure and Presentation for Freestylers. This workshop is open to any dancer in any style of dance. As long as you work with freestyle or improvisation, this workshop will help you. The three sections that I cover in the workshop is understanding freestyle for general performance, for a battle context, and for dance on camera. So the general performance can be for any time you're freestyling, either on stage or in an audition, any time you as a dancer are needed to improvise. Battle context is a very specific context. It's for dancers who compete against each other. In this format, there are very different things to consider. There's a very different setup, the judges are there, the audience are in a different place, and you need to understand how to structure and present your dance in order to be the most effective in competition. Now, when you're freestyling or improvising on camera, Camera, whether this be photography or video, there are many other things that you have to understand. You have to understand how to work with a videographer or a photographer, lenses, lighting, costume, facials, there are many different things that come into play when you're on camera. If you're interested in the workshop, please get in contact via my email, the link is in the description. I've taught multiple editions of the workshop so far, I've worked with breakers, contemporary dancers, poppers, hip hop dancers, lots of different styles of dance. These concepts of structure and presentation work across the board for every style of dance. Anyone that is going to be freestyling or dancing without choreographed movement is going to need to employ structure and presentation in order to communicate their message to an audience. If you like this video, check out our weekly podcast where we discuss different issues from around the dance scene and have some fun. And let us know in the comments which dancers you think have the best structure and presentation.